Hey, this is Dr. Schuster. Last week we gave you the bottom five new exciting things in heart disease. Today we're going to give you the top five. Number five, salt is okay for you. There are some doctors in the American Heart Association who think your salt intake should be ridiculously low, 1.5 grams per day. Nobody can do this. In a recent article from many influential doctors said forget about salt, too little salt is actually bad for you and we have a lot of other things to worry about unless you have congestive heart failure or severe hypertension. Number four, there are new blood thinners that are out there that we use for atrial fibrillation instead of Coumadin. A large study on 27,000 patients with coronary artery disease showed that adding the new blood thinner Xarelto to aspirin in these patients prevented death, heart attack, and stroke. So maybe soon, instead of just taking aspirin, you'll have to take a stronger blood thinner also. The final article is not out yet, so it's a little up for grabs. Number three, many Americans have side effects from statins, but we know how important they are. So there are new injectables out that you can inject yourself twice a month to lower your cholesterol. But they cost $14,000 a year, and the insurance companies don't want to pay for them. A recent large study came out showing that these injectables not only lower your cholesterol, but they also prevent heart attack, stroke, and death. So that hopefully the insurance companies will loosen their strings so we can start giving these injectables only to patients who cannot tolerate statins. Number two, Americans really don't know what's going on. They know that heart disease is bad for you, but half of Americans don't know how much they weigh, half of Americans don't know what's a good blood pressure, and half of Americans don't know you're supposed to check your cholesterol when you turn 30 or 40. So we need to keep on educating Americans. And the number one tip is people always ask me, is it lifestyle or is it genetics that gives me heart disease? And a recent large article in the New England Journal of Medicine says it's both. If you have bad genes, your chance of getting heart disease goes up 91%, which is a lot. But if you lead a favorable lifestyle, your chance of heart disease goes down by 50%. So you can't change your genes, you can change your lifestyle. A favorable lifestyle is simple, no smoking, regular exercise, don't be overweight, and eat a healthy Mediterranean diet. But what I found was very depressing is only one out of three people in this study led a favorable lifestyle. So how are we going to win the war against heart disease if we can't convince our patients to take good care of themselves? So that's the number one tip of the week. A favorable lifestyle can cut your chance of dying in half.